Good afternoon. Welcome to this week's episode of ECC Essentials. I am Halcyon Frank with the Denise Amberly Foundation, and I am coming to you from Arizona where every part of me is sweating. Um, so it's a little hot here, um, but we are looking forward to today's episode. We have Cassie Sexton here from Mindbase. Uh, she's going to be talking about finding your purpose and keeping it which I think is such an important topic because of the career we are in, probably most of us watching are in. Um, there's some days where we feel a little purposeless and a little like, can I keep doing this? Uh, so looking forward to it. But before we dive into the topic, um, thank you for all attending live or if you're listening to the recording. Uh, remember that these are available on Apple Podcasts after the recording or you can always attend our live sessions every other Thursday at 2 Central. Um, so first, Cassie, I will have you introduce yourself and actually tell us a little bit more about Mindbase, where you work, and is also our sponsor for this episode. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm Cassie Sexton. I work at Mindbase um, in the private sector, obviously, but I come from a long background in public safety uh, 14 years. I started in a small beach community here in Southern California. Uh, I'm so sorry that you're in Arizona sweating. I mean, it's warm here, but I just came from the beach. So uh, I know a lot of people who follow me. I got a lot of hate mail in the last three hours. <laughs> but um, I started out in a beach community working in the parking enforcement, went to the jail, and then where I spent the majority of my career in 911. Um, I love that career. I love it. I'll talk a little bit more about it in our discussion. But um I ultimately ended up in the private sector and have been working in wellness for the last couple of years and ended up at Mindbase. Uh, Mindbase is a unique proactive approach to wellness for agencies. There's two different sides of that. Our dashboard, which is specifically for peer support, and it has two features. It tracks the activity for peer support teams, but it also does a one-way export from CAD and RMS, and this is what's so unique. This is what stood out to me, and I went, I need to work for you, and also, where have you been? It one-way exports from CAD and RMS, allowing for a better solution and support plan for agency members so that no one's slipping through the cracks. It's tracking critical calls and even those middle-level calls as they stack up for people so that we can make sure that people are getting the help and support that they need and let peer support know who needs to be checked on. We also have a wellness app. I know there's a lot of standalone wellness apps out there, so that's I usually don't highlight and feature on that because the dashboard is really what stands us apart from everyone else. Our wellness app is available to agency members, families, and retirees. So that is mine based. Um, thank you for having us on and letting us explain that. And then if you want to know more, there is a file in there that can help you point to us to do a demo or find out a little bit more about our company. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. More time for Mindbase for sponsoring this episode. And obviously they're doing amazing things. Um, so we do have that handout available if you want to learn more. Uh, and Cassie works for them. So I think that speaks for their quality. If you know Cassie. Uh, thank you for everybody tuning in live, joining in the chat, letting us know the temperature where you are. Um, it looks like Cami is 77 where she is. So we're all going to ignore that because the rest of us on here live, it is very toasty. Um, so getting into it, I will uh, pass it back to you, Cassie, to kind of kick us off and what uh, it is about finding your purpose and keeping it and why you chose this topic. So this topic is something that I started working on, I want to say early last year. I am a huge Simon Sinek fan and I read his finding or I had listened to his TED talk and also read his book finding your why and it really stuck out to me and it's I know he speaks more to corporate but I feel this can apply to 911 it can apply to police fire corporate private sector anyone and everyone I feel that it spoke to me because I had a really hard time one leaving 911 but even before that and I realized that I had kind of put myself in a corner really um making my whole identity 911 for the longest time. And that was not an overnight process, by the way. That was a slow burn. I um, I was a person of many labels, and then suddenly I was Cassie Sexton, the 911 dispatcher, and my only purpose was to save lives. And I, 
I thought about this for so long. And then even driving home today to come here, I was thinking I had this vision of how to describe this to people. And it's like, you don't even need these labels. But if I could describe who I am now, I picture me standing with all these different prongs out with all these different descriptor words. Like I am not just Cassie, the mind-based account executive. I am so many things. And so I really want to kind of deep dive what that looks like for people, whether you're in 911 or any other faction of life, you can be so many things. And if you don't know what that is, you can find it and it's never too late. And if you did know what it was, you can also find it again, like find something else. Like it's yeah, so different. The picture on the left um, is the shrimp Louie mascot from Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. Um, that's actually me. So that's one of my like frivolous jobs from early in my career. And <laughs> when we were at one of our conferences earlier this year in the season, it was actually my first conference with Mindbase. We went to a networking dinner and we took our took a bunch of people to dinner there. And I had mentioned, oh, I used to be the mascot here. And everyone's like, well, way to bury the lead. And I right. said, I don't really share this with people. When I got hired at my last agency, the background investigator, of course, deep dives your background and they found that out. And they're like, I would like to see that picture. And I'm like, mm, no, I'm not going to send you this picture of me until you right. retire because I'm like, oh, no, this is like a secret. And when he retired, sure enough, he moved to Tennessee and I sent him the picture so he could have it. And I now share it because one, it's one of my favorite things and memories. It's one of my most fun jobs, mm -hmm. but this is back early in my career. And I will say that I am blessed in the sense that I've loved every job I've had. I was a grocery store worker, boxer, bagger, whatever you want to call it, clerk, front desk worker to Bubba Gump Shrimp Company to dance teacher straight into law enforcement at 19. Like, I mean, I've worked a variety of things and everything from parking enforcement to the jail to 911 and then into wellness. I've never not loved my jobs. Mm -hmm. But with that, there was a very sudden shift where suddenly I forgot everything about me and the badge was everything. Right. And when people would ask me, well, what about the rest of your life? Like, what about dance and what about creativity and what about all these things? And I'm like, oh, Forget it. Like, not... this is everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need that anymore. Like, this is everything about me. And it wasn't until that was taken away very drastically mm -hmm. that I realized, holy smokes, like, I need those other things to fill, to give me purpose. Because what happens when you don't have it anymore? Right. And you just, you, and I think of too, like, especially when people are retiring. Um, or maybe like you, who all of a sudden they can't do that. And then they're like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't, you know, I kind of had lost everything else. Um, and you know, entrepreneurship is kind of the big topic nowadays too. people, you know, like find your hobby, do it every day for your job. And it's kind of like, but no, because if you do your hobby as your job, it no longer is a hobby and fun to you. It becomes exactly more of your identity. So yeah, it's. It, and I think a lot of us kind of do that. We get pulled in and because we, and it's not because we want to be like the, um, can't think of the word I want to use, like the, the face of 911. We just believe so much in what we do. And so we just get so engrossed in it because we truly do care. We truly do want it to be great. We want the industry to be better. Um, and I think that's also kind of how we lose ourselves is because we're so driven. Cammie, what you just wrote is exactly, so it wasn't a therapist that asked me that. I was on a date once and someone asked me, well, what do you do outside of work? Like you work all the time, but what do you do? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like I watch TV sometimes. Like I, I have a list of shows that I would Netflix at work and like I make glitter cups and coasters, which was my hobby that I turned into a job and made money. Yep. And then suddenly I didn't love it anymore because it became a burden because I was working <laughs> so much. So like yeah. I was also that crickets person. I was suddenly like, what do I like? I mean, I could say I, I do love going to Disneyland. But other than that, I was kind of like a like at a loss. And suddenly I was like, 
well, what is that? What does that look like for me? And so I had to really like start shifting and I'm going to shift this to 911 and kind of the career and comm center perspective for a minute, but then I'm going to shift it back to perspective for personal. I know a lot of the times, at least for a while, that burnout time period was about that seven year itch mark. And then now it's even earlier, like they're saying it's about that three year mark. And people would start forgetting why we do the job. And when I hit, when I mentioned that I was following Simon Sinek, I heard his principle on like, well, what we usually do is we teach us and we figure out what we're doing, how we're doing it and why we're doing it in that order. And he flipped it on its head and taught people why we're doing it, how we're doing it and what it is. And when I really kind of took that back and looked back at 911, I thought if the reason why I was doing it and I was so passionate about it wasn't what it was, it was why. When I was out in the field seeing what patrol was doing, when I was, when I got that special call, mm -hmm. that one that really changed everything and you saved that person or that little kid or that one moment that gives you the tingles, that was the why for me. And so I think, especially for new people or that person that's been on the job for 20 years or that seven year itch, I always had to bring back the why for me or else I wasn't going to stay. Like I had it, the why started disappearing more and more for me towards mm -hmm. the end. And when I talk to people now who are people at my old com or friends or whoever across the country and they're like, I'm burned out. I'm struggling. I don't want to do this job anymore. I'll never forget a comment from one of my coworkers that said, I'm so happy for you. You found something outside this career. If I could find something that I loved, I would leave. And I'm, first of all, I'm like, there's so many things, right? Like we know, right. This, right. And that's another topic here for today that I will touch right. on, but I'm like, th that's someone who lost the why. And, and, I think and it seems like we can't find those some days. And I'm like, well, we have to find that why and everyone's is different. Yes. I think we also like, there's the losing your why in the sense of you just forget it. And like her, you know, if I could find something I loved, but also sometimes too, again, we almost get so focused that we lose it and it just becomes the expectations of everyone else. Like, they expect me to be the person to talk about 911. They expect me to be the person to talk about training or they expect me, you know, fill in the blank. And we lose our why because it just comes routine and habit. And then we get to a point where we're like, maybe not even burnt out, but we're just, we all of a sudden have to ask ourselves again, like why, even though we knew why and we had a why, but we have now lost it because now we're just oper operating out of expectation. 100%. And the other thing that I will put out there for challenge is that the why that I had when I started dispatching as a baby dispatcher to my why in the middle to my why at the end were all different whys, which is the same theme that I have through this whole conversation is that it's never too late to change your purpose. It's never too late to find a different purpose and it's never too late to have many purposes. Mm -hmm. And my why when I started was I want to change the world. I want to have a voice for victims and I'm here to do things to save lives. The one in the middle was training like you. I'm here mm -hmm. to train the babies. I want to make a difference and I want to change the culture. And now my why is wellness, mm -hmm. smashing stigmas, changing the culture. And it's still training, but not so much the babies, but training our people because I want to make sure that we're training them in the right culture. And it's yeah. this type of stuff. Like, I, I may not have stayed in the career, but I want other people to be able to have a very long, successful, healthy career if they want that. And if they don't call us because we know lots of jobs out there in the private right. sector, there's lots. I mean, and that's what I also you posted recently the hey, everyone tell me what your private sector job is and then posted a here's the options you can do if you leave 911. There's yeah. so many options. And so you aren't people pin themselves in a corner. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so has, that purpose has to be bigger. 
I think too, when we're talking about finding your purpose, don't, especially right now, if you're sitting in a comm center, don't listen, limit yourself. Yes, we want you to stay there. We're not advocating for people to leave, but don't limit yourself to, I need to find my why within the center because you can have a why that's kind of outside the center, but applies, if that makes sense. I think we also put ourselves in the corner, like I need to figure out my purpose uh, and it's dispatch and it's saving lives. And if that's truly what you feel, then that's fantastic. Um, but your why can be something of, I want to serve people around me. And in this season of life, how I'm doing that is through 911. Agreed. I think that my recommendation in this is finding your why at work and at home and having a balance. Like I have a why at work and that's serving the public safety community and providing them wellness resources. And then I have why's at home. And I try to live, practice what I preach, which is kind of this, like I, these pictures on the left is my best friend of many, many years who supports me no matter what. And then the next one is my network of colleagues who are both in the 911 community and out, like people that I call and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Can you bounce ideas off me? And then the bottom are my 911 people from my calm. Like, these were different phases of life, but these were my whys too. Like they're all kind of different. It's a mix. Um, the hardest thing is rebuilding yourself while you're amidst struggle. Like mm -hmm. I call it building the ship while you're sailing on the sea in the storm. Um, that happens. Done it. Uh, don't recommend it. <laughs> the idea is to try and build that beforehand so you're ready to go when the storm comes. Mm -hmm. uh, these also, some of these ideas do come from Simon Sinek and another kind of story topic. He, the, he brought this up during COVID, but I really liked what he had to say because he was like, my friends and I decided we're not going to cry alone. Like we pick up the phone and we'll cry with each other. And I was like, that's powerful. Like not a, yeah, he made it very clear to be like, it's not a bitch session. And I right. was like, understand that like, but you reach out when you're struggling. And even if you're just there holding space, which if you don't know what that means, it's just being there for someone and being a safe spot. And I really loved that. Um, you don't have to do this life alone. The other one was making sure you have a network of people before the crisis happens, which is what I was saying about building the ship before the crisis, before the storm right. comes, um, having a trusted inner circle, whether that's other comm managers, other tr CTOs at other agencies, other dispatchers. Um, the biggest thing I can say is go to trainings, go to conferences, right. go places. Um, if you have, um, if you're a parent, mom or dad groups like whatever your network of your likes are um if you're a spouse of a first responder like whatever you need to find of a network of people that are peers of your same type of thing i would recommend finding something so that you have people that you can lean on during crisis that get it yeah and connections the other ones go ahead i was gonna say and also people outside of it as well because that's usually what happens is we sacrifice the relationships of the people who aren't in public safety. And I'm just as guilty because sometimes I'm like, it's so much easier when they're in public safety. I don't have to explain the background. Like they already know. Um, but especially for me, like that's like my mom. Uh, and so just for her as an example, yes, she's my mom, but now, you know, I'm older friend is she is not in it. She was a, she is a nurse school nurse now, but like she re did overnight in a hospital which if you can find somebody like that, it's fantastic too, right? Because she understands the like urgency, the life and death, the that kind of thing, but she also is not in it. So she has kind of more objectivity um, and is just removed from that. So I encourage you as well to connect within the industry and outside of the industry. Definitely. And well, I definitely have that on the list to talk about. It's not, um, there's the work-life balance, like and the friendships and relationships, like not just work, um, agree a hundred percent, uh, for work also Sorry, focus on, no, I was like, Oh, 
Um, but yes, I love that. And make sure you do have like your trusted circle outside too. And then with connection, make sure that we thrive as humans on connection and making sure that you're serving others, mentoring, like whether it's a new dispatcher, someone who's looking to, or um, volunteer somewhere. That's one of my other parts later is like, it doesn't have to be in our career. It can be something yeah. outside, but helping others, even if it's volunteering at a dog shelter, like whatever it speaks to you, but connection is something that helps us when we're struggling. And if that's your purpose, then that's your purpose. Um, but connection is a big part of making sure that you're still finding purpose, especially when you're struggling. And yes. then the biggest part, which I think we all can relate to because probably a lot of people who are in this industry, whether, and it doesn't have to be 911, whether you're fire, police, emergency services, 911, EMS, a military spouses of connected to this somehow, whatever, touching mm -hmm. the industry are probably some form of type A emergency, A, B, C, D, E, F, G planners um, is having an emergency plan. And I am a big like person. I am a big planner of this is make sure you have an emergency plan. And if you plan for like an earthquake or a fire or a tornado or whatever, same thing for wellness and struggles and make sure that you have your people that you're going to lean on, but also your tricks that work for you have it ready to go because that way when something shit hits the fan, you have it ready. Yeah. That way you're and not like, Oh yeah. What are those resources again? Like where are those? Where's that? And that's too something like when I teach about goal setting, I try to remind people like along that line, right? Like you may have big, hairy, audacious goals. Um, like Brene teaches us, but we also have to remember we're going to have low energy days, high energy days. So same with like your mental health, what's your emergency plan or how are you going to live life on those lower energy days, lower your expectations that maybe I won't get to the gym. I won't get X, Y, Z done versus high energy days where I know I'm going to get X, Y, Z done. Um, I think it goes into that as well. When you're like, I love that idea of an emergency plan. So on my low days, here's how I'm going to reconnect to my why and my purpose, or, you know, here's the activities I'm going to do outside of work intentionally to reconnect to that. One of the tricks and tips that worked for me on this for my why is that on hard days for me, I've written down things that I do well as like almost like an affirmation. And I have it on a board because on days where I'm like, wow, this is really tough. And what am I doing? And it doesn't have to be work related, but it can be. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And then I'll be like, all right, this is why. And yep, that's, that is true. And it helps break that like barrier. I usually and just ask myself like, why can't I be a better person? <laughs> Sorry. And I mean, like for me, I have to be, I have, I have to physically see it. Otherwise I will talk myself out of it. Oh yeah. Cause I can talk myself in like circles. And so yes. I'm very persuasive that way in my own brain. <laughs> and so I will, if I can look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's right. I did that. Okay. And so for me, that helps me find my purpose again. Uh, I know you're a Golden Girls fan. I'm Damn. a Friends fan. Ugh. And so I am the struggle bus person. Like I have, this is an actual photo of me uh, getting my futon stuck on the stairs. And I was like, hi, uh, someone needs to come help me because I've tried 87 times to get this down the stairs myself. And I admit that I was like fiercely independent and I I will always choose the struggle the first time around, no matter what, because I, I don't care. I'm going to try it. Um, so when you want to talk about people choosing struggle and losing purpose and finding purpose again and trying to figure it out and reinventing themselves and finding new hobbies and um, that's me. So if anyone needs help figuring out a hobby to try, like, feel free to email me, call me, text me, bat signal, whatever, smoke signal, pigeon carrier. Like I have a list because I've a, tried them. <laughs> the fun side effect of ADHD 
Um, and I don't, I, I like to think I don't have it as bad as some people. Um, but that is, they, we, you know, the stereotype is you start something and five minutes later, you're like, I'm bored. I'm moving on to the next thing. And so I then spend 50 more dollars on a new hobby and so on and so forth. <laughs> I, that is one of the things like I laugh about because so also Disney fan. Um, this is from one of the Disney leadership books that I love. Um, Trey Mater, I don't think is logged on, but he also posts quotes from this book that it's um, the wisdom of Walt. And then I was posted earlier that I was reading the next book, the beyond the wisdom of Walt. And one of my favorite leadership books, but I love some of the things that they have to say in that book. And it's so true. Like for me, it's an imagination thing. I'm like, I will never be done growing. First of all, I'm a lifetime learner. Um, take me to more classes. Let me learn more things. Like I can have endless certificates and whatever I want to learn. Um, it doesn't matter. Like to me, I can always learn something else new. And so the world is your oyster. However many cliche things you want me to add to that, I can, right. but I think that it's so important to keep trying new things and keep learning because this job isn't going to be forever. Right. And maybe it was like, I have people who have worked all the way till forever and ever, never, amen. But it's like, you can only work so long. Yes. And so much. And also, just a fair warning to everybody because I've done it too. At some point, we also like to work to hide from problems or address the fact that we haven't, you know, handled things because we've just hid behind this identity of 911 when maybe our real purpose is just to serve. And so now we haven't addressed the other things in our life because we've hid behind this job. Um, you can't run from your problems either. <laughs> Eventually they will Guilty. catch up. That was me. I was the workaholic, multiple agencies, 80 hour shifts a week because I was like numbing all my problems early because I thought, well, I have nothing else to do. So why don't I work? Right. And I was good at it until I wasn't like I was fine until mm -hmm. I wasn't. But then it was gone for a while and I went back improved I could still do it and then I left for the private sector and that's okay too like I know all of it's great but I will tell you the scariest thing was looking myself in the mirror and being like who am I without this badge and headset and starting fresh and I tried things that I used to like and some of them stuck and some of them I was like ew no I don't like this anymore it's yeah. almost like trying a plate of food and being like that is not what that used to taste like I don't remember it tasting like this. And then sometimes trying something that you used to not like and be like, oh, that is delicious. And why haven't I had that? Right. And it was kind of exciting, scary, but exciting. And trying new things are scary. And I know that the other thing I'll say is that I know this job makes us a lot of us cynical and a lot of us hate people. Right. Also guilty. And so going out the last thing I would want to do after working all those hours is want to go out and see more people. Right. In fact, I almost would rather like hide in my hide a hole and like not talk to anybody. So it was a big challenge to go out and want to try new things, but I did it. I would do like, I do it like once every month or once every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And so here's some ideas to start small on like how to keep growing or how to find your purpose. If you need to start because you lost it, if you have it already, I'm happy for you. If you yeah. need to find it, here's a way to start. If it's at work, I would start with what we talked about with Simon Sinek. Flip the what you're doing, how, and why. Flip it to why. Start looking at why we're doing 911. Mm -hmm. If it's outside of work, this is the way to start. Join a, start figuring it out. What fills your cup? Join a club, volunteer, try new things. Look at your work-life balance. Um, I always say this, whenever I say this, people are like, well, how do, what if you're, I'm the girl who left all my personal friends behind and only had law enforcement friends for the longest time. Mm 
this mm-hmm. shift back to having normal friends, normies, as I call them, has been <laughs> has been hard. I'm not saying get rid of your friends or your family. I'm just saying, like, maybe make some other friends also. Or, like, for me, that meant reconnecting with my family. Yeah. Because I hadn't been going to family functions for the last 10 years. Yeah. It's easy to distance ourselves. It's so, so true. Yeah. So we've come up on the half hour. So as we kind of wrap up, um, kind of talked a little bit about everything. It's been a really good discussion. I know it's like a good time when the time goes really fast. Um, so for those of you watching live, there is uh, Cassie's contact information. Please feel free to reach out um, to C Sexton at getmindbase.com. If you're listening to the audio version, please reach out um, to myself at the foundation and I can definitely connect you with her or reach out on social media. Um, But if you kind of had to leave everyone with one parting thought, um, actually, before I ask that, because I want it to be how we end, I will say um, quickly, keep an eye out for the link for our next episode in two weeks on the 27th. We're going to be talking about policy writing. So it's a little more hands on in the center. Um, So stay tuned for that on our main foundation Facebook page or our ECC Essentials page. We'll be putting that up. Um, But going back now, if you had to leave everyone with just one thought about finding your purpose and keeping it, what would be that that last thought? I think my last thought is that don't be afraid to keep learning and growing. And it's never too late. Never too late for a new purpose, new adventure. Or to, I like to think, to find joy in what you're doing now and renew your joy in it through trying out different things. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you to everyone watching again. Thank you to Cassie and Mindbase and anyone listening to the recording or watching the replay. We'll be back in two weeks, uh, but this has been fantastic. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.